Hello everyone, uh, my name is Michelle Angelo Rocha and I'm a PhD student in Educational Leadership and Policy Studies at the University of South Florida. Today I'm here with a very special guest, is Paul uh, Mijas. Um, he is one of the co-editors of the book Analyzing and Interpreting Qualitative Research of the interview that's in production right now with SAGE. Paul is Assistant Director of Qualitative Research at the Old Dominion Institute for Research on Social Science at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. He has lectured on qualitative inquiry, design, and analysis at several universities, including the University of Puerto Rico, Howard University, and Temple University. You can read, read more about uh, the work of Dr. Paul Mejas in the description below this video. Hi, Dr. Paul, how are, how are you doing? I'm, I'm very, very good. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. <laughs> Could you talk a little about what's unique about this book? Well, you know, there are a lot of books um, that talk about qualitative research, but this book is really focused on um, the how-to and what happens behind the scenes. Um, so we get really into the details of what researchers really do um, when they're really struggling with data, with huge amounts of data in front of them. Um, Char Charlie Vanover and, and I sometimes use the cooking metaphor here, you know, rather than just pulling out or showing a recipe or pulling out something that's already finished, we're showing you what people do in the kitchen, the messy, the messy part of it. And so that's how I think of this book as being helpful because a lot of a lot of people new to qualitative or even experts in the field can see what people actually did with data and how they struggled with transcription or um, how they how they worked through an interpretation. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, what what the book can contribute to qualitative research? What uh, do you think we the differential? Um, what do you think you? I'm, I'm sorry. Okay, mm -hmm. sorry. And how the book can contribute to qualitative research? How can it contribute? Yes. Yes. Um, well, you know, I, th I think about the the uh, qualitative research life cycle, starting from the you know early design to to final products. And I think this, this book really helps kind of clarify the analysis and interpretation part of that life cycle. And so um, I, I think it, it provides people with very specific examples of things that aren't often talked about in detail. For example, cross-cultural and cross-language research. What does that really mean when um, you are working across cultures and you might have a, a Western audience? Um, it, it's a very complicated, um, a translational problem, and we have chapters that, that address that and actually show show text um, in both, for example, Spanish and English. And what does that mean when the translation doesn't really capture the the, the original? Um, you know, what do you do with that, that kind of problem? Um, and you know, we have several chapters on memo writing. Elaine Keane has written a, a chapter on analytic memo writing. I, I think a lot of times. Um, Quality researchers are, are told to do memos, but they don't really know what they don't have examples. And so this book uh, gives you examples, and so readers can really understand. Oh, this is this is how I might uh, use memos in a way that's really productive. So we think I think of this book as being really generative to give people ideas on on um, on ways of approaching analysis and to think about the larger research life cycle and to make good decisions. That's really the, the key here is to think about decisions that really um, move you in the, in the direction that's gonna work for your data set. Oh, great. Uh, you also have a chapter. So what's the name of the chapter and what could you give us a, a brief, a small brief about your chapter? All right, yeah. So my chapter is called Memo Writing Strategies, Analyzing the Parts and the Whole. And so um, it, it is focused on memo writing, but it's, it's also pointing out that, um, you know, oftentimes as quality researchers, we're, we fragment our thinking with coding and with our, our laptop screens, we're looking at just this, this little piece of data. And, and in my chapter, I remind people of the, uh, these, this idea of contiguity and that uh, interview is a holistic unit and to go back to that wide angle lens and you know what do we learn from the bigger interview itself what are the what's the narrative trajectory trajectory what are the bigger patterns and threads across the interview um, more holistically and then to look more narrowly at fragments and how do those things talk to each other the bigger picture and the smaller fragments i think there needs to be more of a conversation uh, between um, 
the, the parts in the whole so that researchers don't get lost into the lost in, in these details and forget about lar the larger messages of the interview. Okay. Uh, do you have uh, like when people they that they want to buy the book and read about, do you have like a message for them or like what they are what they are gonna expect when they they have access to the book? Yes, yeah, so I, I think one of the things that people will gain is um, being able to, um, first of all, if, if it's a faculty member, they can pro provide students with really, really um, strong examples of what work looks like, what analysis can look like, what interpretation really means, and different, different kinds of writing products. It does not, not everything needs to be a, um, a journal article or a set of PowerPoint slides or other ways of presenting and distributing and disseminating uh, knowledge. And so um, for, for that kind of reader, a faculty member, they are um, giving um, themselves a, a tool to share with students. And then on, on the student side of things, um, I think this, this will help build confidence for students. And um, rather than just really struggling with a, a decision or uh, struggling with a, with a set of data, I think students will look at this and it opens up possibilities. They realize, oh, this is, this is what I can do with memos. This is what I can do with a certain kind of coding. And so I think it, it will uh, help provide confidence and give them tools to, um, to move through places where they might get stuck. I, I, you know, I work a lot with grad students here and I notice when they show up in my office, they're stuck. Right? Yes. <laughs> but, that, but there, you know, there isn't always somebody next door for them to talk to. And I think the, the book is a kind of, a kind of, um, kind of data therapist for them in, in, yeah. a, in the book form. Mm -hmm. I am interviewing uh, the authors of the book and I'm already learning so much. Just listen to the stories and uh, it's just, is uh, I already, I totally recommend and I think people should read uh, the, uh, the book and uh, so thank you so much do you want to have like a final message for who want um, to read the book or your chapter yeah so i guess maybe my, my final message here is that this is really about context dependent knowledge um that you know you can learn so much more by going deeper with fewer and that's kind of the the the, um, the beauty of qualitative. And there's a real love of qualitative research in these chapters. I think everybody who's contributed and the editors um, are, have a deep respect for this kind of work and this kind of knowledge building. And so this is, you are entering into a community when you pick up this book. It's, it's a whole community that we're carrying with us and we're sharing um, with anybody who's interested. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking your time to talk to me today. Thank you, Michelle. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye.